Welcome to Mobility Insider. I'm your host, Morten Hannesbo. Today I'm going to talk about this car, the 2024 Tesla Model 3 Long Range. What you get in the Long Range is the larger battery, the 75 kilowatt hour net capacity battery, and you get 498 horsepower, 0 to 100 in 4.4 seconds, and a top speed of 201 kilometers per hour. I recently tested the standard range Model 3 Highland and I really liked the car. I was impressed with the quality, the way the car was built, the way it drives, the solidity of the vehicle and of course the long range is no different. You get all the qualities in this car as you get in the standard range Model 3. But there are some subtle differences between the two. First of all, the long range is a little bit heavier, about 100 kilos because of the motors and because of the larger battery. Inside the vehicle, you get a bigger speaker system. You get 17 speakers in this car and you just get nine speakers in the standard range. They both sound pretty good, but obviously this one is the better sound of the two. There's some design differences inside. Uh, the trim level is a little bit different, but overall the two cars are very, very similar. And most importantly, the quality of the Model 3 that we now see from the factory in China is really outstanding, whether you choose the standard range or the long range. The base price, 50,990 Swiss francs. And if you choose the Model 3 standard range, it will cost you 42,990 Swiss francs. Both models, you can choose some options. In this case, this car has the full self-driving option, 7,300 Swiss francs. And it also has the white interior that costs you another 1,200 Swiss francs. Tesla is of course known for its uh, supercharger network and you have lots of charters spread all over Europe. So you can always charge your Tesla fast. But what is also impressive is the efficiency of the vehicle. Now for this car, the indicated WLTP range is up to 678 kilometers uh, on a full charge, which is probably very optimistic. Um, in this case, under these cold conditions, about 10 degrees Celsius, I expect the car to have a consumption of about 15 kilowatt hours per 100 kilometers. And that gives you an everyday range uh, of about 500 kilometers, which is still pretty good for winterly conditions. Now I want to talk a little bit about the design of the vehicle and the build quality since the Highland change. So first of all, pretty much everything on the car, the lamps, the fenders, the rear part of the vehicle and the rear lamps, everything is new on the vehicle. But the most impressive thing is that the quality of the vehicle, the way it's been built, has improved significantly over the prior models. So it's all really finished excellently and you don't see any quality mishaps anymore on the vehicles, which used to be the case for the Model 3 and some of the other Teslas. The quality level is impeccable. The Model 3 is quite a large car. It's uh, 472 centimeters in the length. In the width, uh, with mirrors, 209 centimeters. You get 594 liters in the rear trunk. And you get another 88 reusable liters in the front, so you have plenty of space for your cargo for your long trips. What strikes me when I drive the Model 3 is the good balance Tesla has found in terms of the minimalistic approach and still you get all of the features and controls you need in the car. Yes, there is a lot happening on the screen in the middle of the vehicle here, uh, but you do get used to the menu setup after some time. I guess where some people will struggle, and certainly I do, is the lack of stalks for indicators. Uh, you have to use the indicator buttons here on the steering wheel. That is a little bit of a burden, I think. Uh, we have many roundabouts um, in the area, so you go into the roundabout, so first you have to indicate to the left that you're not taking the first exit. And then you turn round. And now you have to look at the steering wheel to press the button to get out of the roundabout again. And that does distract a little bit. And I think it is the wrong way Tesla has done it. You get used to it. And I guess most young drivers will very quickly. But mature drivers and most people who buy new cars are mature 
experienced drivers and they will struggle a little bit with this setup. The biggest difference between the Highland facelifted version of the Model 3 and the prior version, I think when you drive it, is the suspension and the, the way they have sorted the vehicle when you drive it. It really feels very competent and it feels almost like uh, it's a class higher than the previous uh, Model 3 was. The suspension is very comfortable, but still gives you a lot of feel for what is happening in, in a really good way. The steering is, um, is just between heavy and light, just, just right, you get good feedback and it's, uh, it's not too light, so you have control. Um, this is just perfect for, for me. I really like the way Tesla has made it. So my conclusion after driving the long race version is it is a really good car. There's not much I would uh, ask Tesla to change. There are two things, and I'm sure many people are tired of hearing that. I think the indicator stalks, that is a mistake. We should put them back, Tesla. Uh, second is the, the heads up display I would like to have as well. You can get it as an aftermarket installation if you want. I can also live with the car the way it is. It is not a big issue but nevertheless. The consumption figures are really impressive. Under normal circumstances, you will be seeing 15 to 15 and a half kilowatt hour consumption per 100 kilometers. In the summertime, that will drop to 12 or 13. And even under really cold winterly conditions, you're not gonna see consumption numbers above 20 kilowatt hours per 100 kilometers. That is in this segment, and I think in any comparison, the best you get for the moment in any car. What is very impressive about Tesla Model 3 Highland is the way it drives. Super competent, super fast. The way they put the steering, the configuration, the brakes, the weight of the vehicle, and the way the motors respond is really excellent. No one does that better in this price category. And the build quality and the finish of the vehicle is really top. You have to find a expensive premium vehicle to find a better quality level and the price value is incredible. Let's talk about the difference between the standard range and the long range and which one I would recommend you buy. So what you get in the long range, of course, is the longer range, the bigger battery. What you also get is the dual motor configuration. So you get four wheel drive, so you can actually use the car uh, in, in the forest and, and some other off-road uh, situations. Um, if you do often drive in winter time and you want to go uh, uphill, the four-wheel drive configuration probably is, a, is an advantage as well. You get much faster acceleration. There's a big difference. Is it worth 8,000 Swiss francs? I think for me, it would be. Uh, whether it's uh, worth the money for you depends very much on the way you want to use your car. So my recommendation for me, I would choose the long-range four-wheel drive dual motor configuration. So what is my verdict on the car? Well, it is a four-star verdict. Those minor details I mentioned uh, are not uh, enough for me to, to mark down the car. This is a four-star car for me. It is the best in this price category, and it even betters some of the much more expensive vehicles from some of the premium brands. The benchmark in this size in this type of vehicle is simply the Tesla Model 3, and in this particular case, the long range dual motor. Thank you for watching Mobility Insider. If you think someone would benefit from seeing this video, please share it. Please like the video and do comment below and give me any questions you may have to the Tesla Model 3. Thank you.